Error intervals, what are they and how do we calculate them super quickly? There's two main types of error intervals we need to look at, which is just general rounding and a special one, which I'll do at the end. So check out the, this uh, first question. It says the attendance at a football match was 5,000, correct to the nearest 100. Find the error interval for the attendance. Okay, so you might be wondering, why have I left all this space? It's just so I can show you guys with a number line what's going on. And then I'm going to show you how we can very quickly find these error intervals by pattern recognition, basically. So 5,000 was correct to the nearest 100, meaning what the actual attendance was, it was rounded to the nearest 100. So if we think about number line here, we have 5,000, then we have 5,100, we'd have 5,200, he would have what, 4,900, 4,800, okay, etc. And we're thinking, okay, which one of these values would round to 5,000 to the nearest 100? Well, these are all hundreds. So for example, if we look at this, that does not round to 5,000 to the nearest 100 because 9, that's what we're rounding, 0, well, it keeps as 9. So this just stays the same to the nearest 100. In fact, all of these stay the same to the nearest 100. So we're going to have to look even deeper. So I'm going to change the number line. And instead of looking at the hundreds, we actually need to look at the tens. Okay. So for example, we're looking at between 4,900 and uh, 5,000. We'd be looking at 4,990. 4980. On the other side, you would have 5010, 5020, etc. And then you're looking along and say, okay, do they round to 5000? Okay, look here. Rounding to the nearest 100, the 9, that 9 is going to round it up. Yep, yeah, that definitely rounds to 5000. How about this? Well, the 8 does round that up. Okay. So provided this number is large enough to increase this number by one, we're all good. So how far down can we go? Seven will work. Yeah, seven's gonna round that up. Six is gonna work, it's gonna round it up. And five's gonna work, it's gonna round it up. Four will not work. Four, nine, four, oh, the four is gonna keep that down to 4,900. So we can keep going over here until we get to, so I'll leave that tick there because all the numbers in between. We get to 4950. Okay, so all the numbers in between will round to 5000 to the nearest 100. On the other side, what would it be though? Well, 1 rounds that down, so that's all good. The 2 rounds that down, that's still 5000. So how far can you go? Well, most students would say, okay, let's go up to four, yeah? So if I change that to four, five, zero, four, zero, oh, the four, that's a weird four, the four definitely keeps that zero the same. However, this is not the smallest value. With this one, if I changed it to four, nine, uh, four, nine, so I went one less, that goes down to 4,900, right? However, this number here, I can actually do a bigger number. The diagram is not to scale. 5,041. That still rounds to 5,000 to the nearest 100 because you're looking at this number. The 4 keeps it the same. I could change that to a 2, a 3, or 4. In fact, this number doesn't make a difference. It can go all the way up to 9. All right, that four still keeps that the same. Now, obviously here we're dealing with integers, meaning whole numbers, because we're talking about the attendance, but mathematically, we can actually go further. Yeah, and I'm gonna discuss that a bit more when we do question two. So technically the largest integer that rounds to 5,000 is 5,049, okay? So we would say that your attendance, let's call it x, has to be at least 49.50. 
but less than or equal to 50, 49. Now I'm gonna adjust this in a second, but first, let's take a look at this question too. So I'm not gonna write that as my final answer just yet, but technically speaking, this is correct, okay? So that's correct, you would get full marks if you do say it like this, unless they gave you the inequality, which will be in this form. If they give it to you like this, that is now not correct. We'll discuss in a second. How does it work with lengths? Why is lengths different to attendance? Well, attendance talking about people, whole numbers, no in-between values. A length is a continuous variable. We can have decimals. How would it work? Seven centimeters. So a length was measured to be seven centimeters correct to the nearest centimeter. Find the error interval. So looking at the number line there, we have seven centimeters. You're now thinking about all the numbers you could have measured with a ruler that would have rounded to seven to the nearest seven, uh, to the nearest centimeter. Well, 7.1 would work. 7.2, yeah, they all round to seven. We would have 6.9, 6.8. Let's keep going here. 6.7, 6.6 and 6.5. Very similar to this one, okay? You can't go to 6.4 because if that was a four, that would run that down to six. So all of these work, yeah? The six runs it up, seven runs it up, eight up, up. But on the other side, it's a little bit different. 7.3, 7.4, okay? That rounds to seven, 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 seven. Now, what do mathematicians love? Symmetry, all right? Look at seven. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. This is triggering. There should be five on each side. Why is there an issue on the other side? Because I could make a larger number that still rounds to seven. Because remember, it's all about this number, right? Well, I could do 7.4. Nine. That is a larger number that still rounds to seven because that four keeps it at seven. But then I could go even further. Four point, whoops, seven point, seven point, four nine, add another nine. I could keep adding nines. In fact, the largest possible number that still rounds to seven is 7.49 recurring, okay? So your largest is actually 7.49 recurring. But guys, if you were to put this in a calculator and I try it, get your calculator, do 7.4, keep pressing nine until the nines go off the screen. What does it give you? It gives you 7.5 because mathematically, there is no number in between these two numbers, so they must be the same. So actually, the upper bound, we say, is 7.5, okay? Now, I'm gonna do like a half tick kind of cross there. Why? So that's a tick cross. It looks like a J. Because 7.5 obviously does round to eight. So what we do, and this goes back to this inequality, is we say, that the smallest value is 6.5. However, the upper bound, the glass ceiling, you could say is 7.5. But it can't equal 7.5. But any value under this will for sure round to seven, okay? So, you can see that it's kind of all, there's 10 ticks now, all right? So any value less than this will go into the 7.4s, which would still round to seven. Now, what do you guys notice? Look at the difference. When you take these away, what do you get? You get one. One was the error interval, nearest centimeter. One centimeter. Your error interval needs to be the same size as your actual error, yeah, what you rounded to. And this goes back to the previous question. It said nearest 100. If I say this, is the difference 100? No. The difference between them is 99. So when we do error intervals, we prefer to have the error interval to be equal to what you rounded to. So if the lower is 4950, 
When you add 100, you get 50, 50. So if we go back to this, we say, look, yes, that's the largest integer, but instead of doing that, we do 50, 50, and say anything less than that would round to 5,000, okay? And that would be our final answer for both of them, which actually lets us um, do error intervals very quickly because if this gap needs to be the size of the what you're rounding to and it's symmetrical, if you take your error divided by 2 and you add and subtract from this, you get your answer. 100 divided by 2 is 50, 5,000 plus 50, 5,000 minus 50. If that's your error, 1, you divide that by 2, 0 0.5, 7 plus 0 0.5, 7 minus 0 0.5. Which means if I give you guys a different error, say here if I said nearest 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5, 5,000 plus 5 would be 5,005, 5,000 minus 5 would be 4,995, and that would be your answer. But guys, you have to remember the form of the inequality, it can't equal the upper bound, all right? But that is your upper bound. So if they ask you for the upper bound, you need to say this, and this is your lower bound, okay? In fact, when it comes to the attendance, you would say 5,049, you wouldn't say 5,050, but in this context, you would say your upper bound is that, and that's your lower bound. This one is an interesting one that would catch you out um, because we're dealing with integers, but your error interval, you'd say this, but your upper bound is 5,049. That's the largest value of the attendance at the football stadium, okay? Now, let's take a look at this last example of error intervals. Umid used his calculator to work out the value of x. He wrote down the first two digits, 1.6. Find the error interval for x. Now, what's interesting here is Umid has not actually rounded anything. He's just written down what numbers he's seen, okay? He saw 1.6. He didn't care what came after. This guy's bugging. It could have been 1, 7, 6, whatever. He just wrote 1.6. He could have read 1.6, 7, 1, 2, etc. He still would have just written 1.6. Okay? Now, what, is, what type of rounding is this? It's known as truncation. Truncation, meaning you're just chopping the number there, truncation means to break off, split, to chop off, and you're just ignoring everything else. So what you're thinking about here when it comes to truncation is um, what the smallest value could have been that you would have truncated, and what's the largest value, okay? So what is the largest value? Well, the largest value is you're looking at this number and saying, okay, what's the biggest number it could possibly be? Well, that would be 9, okay? So the largest value, if I truncated it, would be 9. But then the other numbers are important. It's not 9, 0, 0, 0, 0. It's if I keep putting 9s here. 9, 9, 9, etc. Okay? But, guys, if you type that in your calculator, 1.69 recurring, what number is it going to tell you? Well, the 9 rounds the 6 up to 7. Just like here, the 9 rounds the 4 up to 5, now it becomes 7.5, you can type in your calculator. Your upper bound for x is 1.7, okay, but not equal to 1.7. Remember, 1.7, 0, 0, 0, would not truncate to 1.6, but any number less than that would. So you can see for all of them, it has the exact same format, okay? But what would the smallest value be? Well, just like we said the largest value would be 9, the smallest would be zero. And then we just keep putting zeros. And that just gives you 1.6. And that's very interesting when it comes to truncation because the lower bound is always equal to the number. And then you just look at what you essentially read up to and you just add one to that value. So if it was, I don't know, 2.8, it would be 2.8, 2.9, okay? And that's that. So this here is error intervals, guys. I have made videos where we'd use error intervals to then calculate upper and lower bounds using algebra, a very important question. So make sure you check that out. But if you did learn something today, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content. 
If you're interested in my GCSE maths courses, more, dis more information in the description. And if you want to submit your own questions to the community to get feedback, feel free to join the Learn Gang Reddit page. Link is in the description. See you in the next one. Nice.